Hi, greetings everyone and welcome to this episode of Sea Hunters. I'm your host, Randy Morton, and it's my pleasure and an honor to be here with you today to introduce you to one of my friends and a good fisher that I've known for quite a few years. I don't know if you've seen a bus on the road that says, protect your soul. Well, we are going to meet the man who drives that bus today, Mr. Alexis Brown. Welcome to Sea Hunters. Okay. Well, I must say, first I must start, give God thanks that I could be here. Just to share some, some views and some way forward, how we could go forward in terms of work-wise, in terms of knowledge, wisdom, you know, just spread it out there in the field so that other people could get involved and we could push our federation forward. All right, Mr. Brown. Well, we are here to talk about fish pot making. I've seen many fish pots done by different fishers throughout the island. I look at this one and I see that it's a double funnel. Could you tell us something about how um, you got into making fish pot and what it takes to make a fish pot in terms of cost, in terms of time, and how long it would last in the seawater? Well, in terms of fish pot, um, to make a fish pot would take me from scratch to cut it would take me about two hours to complete. I mean, you cut it, you try it up, put on the sticks, like this one, we start. I don't know if you could, uh, okay, you would be able to show them. But we start like this, and then we put on the bottom stick, then we add the side stick, and then we add the funnel. That would take me about two hours to complete. And what we normally do, we take them out, clear them out, probably some people put them probably 600 feet. Well, I only use about 120 feet. <laughs> I ain't able to pull them from that deep. <laughs> and uh, what happened, a fish pot would last, depend on the area. Like over in the south, it would probably last maybe about nine months, 11 months. Yeah, it depends on the the behavior of the water. Because sometimes you got some rough seas where we'll just bounce them up and down. But normally, which part I fish down here, across the narrow area, and down monkeys, we probably would last about a year and a half. About a year and a half, which is very good to me. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a lot of working. Because normally, I work them for about Three days, I work three days per week, annual. Well, sometimes, you know, it depends on the weather. It might drop to maybe one, sometimes none, sometimes. But normally it would be like three days a week. And this is something that I've been doing for over 40 years now. This is where I really make my livelihood. I mean, this is my livelihood. This is where I really you know, generate more some, uh, you know, my income. And I must say I come from a, a fishing background, eh? <laughs> I mean, you go back in way, way generation where, you know, my great-grandfather, great-great-grandfather come down the line is fishermen. So it's all in the, all in the blood. <laughs> it's, it's in our genes just to fish because, and fishing is something that I enjoy a whole lot. It's like, you know, when you go to play a game that you like. So you go out and you got fun, and then you could still generate money from it. I mean, nothing like doing a job that you enjoy and making money from. So, you know, I plan, let's say I plan to go out Tuesday. By Monday, I don't start to feel happy that I'm going Tuesday. <laughs> you know? Planning to go Tuesday because normally right now I go, I leave home probably about maybe quarter to six. I, I don't go only like them long time, you know, because at least we got faster motor and everything now so we could reach in a lot quicker time. And if I got to leave home 5.30, by three o'clock I done up. Mm. <laughs> by three o'clock I done up 
probably make some tea or some pies or something and then, you know, just hanging out for the time to come to, to move. So, but fishing is an interesting thing. And it's something that, you know, a lot of people fell in love with, like I do. And it's so nice when you could do something that you could own a living from, that you enjoy doing. Well, that was quite a mouthful, and I do appreciate you sharing the, the entire background story as to where you came from. And um, let's talk more about the fish pot itself right now. I, I have seen persons cut out fish pot. I know the bottom piece is one, the top is one, and then the side, it looks like it's two separate pieces. This is a double funnel. Yeah. So who taught you how to do this? Well, I must be honest with you. What happened, I look at people doing it. Because I come from a fishing family, I would go around, watch them cut the wire, you know, look at them, tie them up, brace them, and just learn from there without anybody even, you know, taught me to do it. And what I did that different to, you know, the, the men them before, is I cut them a different way than they cut them. Probably if I had directly learned from them, I might have cut them the way that, I, that they cut them. Mm -hmm. But I cut them a different way, where I would just cut and cut off, but sometimes they count them off. Me, me count in my head while me cut. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's a different way. So that's why I would, I would take a roller wire um, that would you know, cut out um, 10 pot, 10 fish pot, this size, and I would cut out that in about 40 minutes. Wow. That is fast. Yeah, in about 40 minutes, cut down, bust down everything. And like I tell you before, I would check probably about two hours to well, complete it mm -hmm. in terms of just normal thing. If I probably want to go faster, I probably could go faster. But just a normal thing would be, it would last me about two hours to, for it to complete, comfortable. So normally, what I, what I do as a normal thing today, I would just treat them comfortably, there, completely them, complete them. So. Okay. All right. Now that we've seen the first stage where you've cut the bottom, the top, and the sides, and then secure them, let's move on to the second phase. And most persons would probably think that a fish pot, you would tie the part first but apparently this that is what we are looking at is actually the bottom you tie the bottom of the fish part first so explain to us why you tie the bottom first and why it has so many in relation to what would be seen at the top well it's just like a house when you're building a house you got to make sure you got a, a good foundation mm -hmm. you got to lay out a good foundation there where you're going to find the most steel the most, you know, um, the eight-inch blocks, where you know that you got a good foundation. It's the same way with the, the chop. You gotta make sure that you got a good foundation because what happened is like, this are the one gonna rest on the bottom of the, of the sea. When you find the bottom of the sea rough, the part itself keep moving from side to side. Just like, a, they don't move just like a paper. Just like you see a paper bag, and the wind blow it over there, blow it back over there, as just so the, the part then move sometimes when you see the, the water, you know, rough. Sometimes you find the water looks smooth on the top, mm -hmm. but the bottom is going from side to side. Sometimes them guys watch the fish part putting from side to side. You know, slide, would slide go a good, maybe 10 feet, come back, mm -hmm. just, so the bottom definitely got to be the real good foundation. Got to make sure that the bottom is strong to, you know, to bear this pressure. All right. Now, I don't know too much about the fish pot. I'm just looking and I'm learning. But I know that some persons would set their pot on the water and others would set on a buoy. Um, is there a difference in the construction of the pot when it's set on the water versus the one that's set on a buoy, and what 
type of pots are you setting and where you are on the water? Well, the pot wouldn't make a difference. The pot could be the same. But the some people like to set underwater without buoy. Some people like to use buoy underwater, which I use buoy underwater because it's so much safer. It's safer from the dishonest people <laughs> and it's safer from the boat, probably if a boat sail across, you know, from cutting them off. Some people use uh, would use GPS. Well, I still use the old time style. Even though, now and again, I would, it all depends on how the place overcast and I can't see properly. I might, you know, set one or two with GPS. But I still use the old time style where, you know, take mark from, you know, from house, hill. Sometimes I hope that, sometimes trees, sometimes I hope that somebody not cut down the tree. <laughs> 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 because I said if somebody cut down the tree, then, you know, you probably could lose your fish pot. Like one time, a guy was telling me that, you know, uh, someone went out and take a mark from a, a cow. Yes, I, I uh, And then, I, you know, when he go back out, this, you know, somebody moved the cow, he lost the fish pot. Mm. So I could remember at one time, this thing happened to me, something similar, where I was over in Salpaneva, and they had a fire over there, and tends to burn down one of the trees that I had mark. the mark by. Mm -hmm. But so happened, the stump of the tree was still visible. Okay. So I was able to, to find it still. And I said, by thank God that, you know, the whole tree didn't destroy. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. Now, let's take a, a short walk over to the finished pot. So, so, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Brown is saying to get to this stage, with both funnels in, I see there's one that's still not complete yet. But when this is completed from just a roll of wire, it takes him two hours comfortably. Um, and this pot would last him about a year and a half. Now, in terms of your fishing activity, do you get back the amount of money you spend on a regular basis on fish pots, or would you be interested in trying other forms of fishing? Well, for me, <laughs> I definitely, you know, own a big income from, from fish pot. I make back a lot more than the money that I spend. Because, for example, <laughs> for this, it would cost me probably uh, with rope and everything, would cost me, let's say, about $220. It cost me about $220. I mean, when you look at that, you, you, you know, you're saying that just 21 pound of fish. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we do catch like 50 pound of fish in one pot. <laughs> so I can't say that we doesn't, you know, make money from it. We, we does. You know, sometimes we do go through some rough situation where, you know, fish has been difficult to catch. Because uh, just like I tell you, the wave, the water does be, you know, rough sometimes. And, you know, the fish them tends to stay in the hole. They wouldn't come out if the... And which in, i so happy for that. Because what happened if the fish them even come out, they would die. Mm. Yeah, if they come out and they stay in the fish pot, when the water is like that, you would meet a pot, you know, full of dead fish. So we're still happy that, you know, that the fish them doesn't go in the pot. So we just say, well, thank God that, you know. Mm -hmm. Because now and again, you will meet, you know, like a one or two or sometimes three, you know, dead fish mm -hmm. inside the pot. Now, um, Mr. Brown, I would like to thank you for sharing your time and some of your wisdom with us and the viewers of Sea Hunters. Mm -hmm. um, are there any final words, not just to myself but to anyone who will be who will be viewing the program yeah well i would just like to say i um got plans to start uh, a project i must say a training course next week where i talk to a couple of the guys who you know who are willing to learn which i i think you know that will be a big boost for navis because we're losing 
uh, you know, a lot of women getting older and they, you know, they strain away from fishing because they're getting older and they can't continue. So what you really want to do is to get some young people involved. So that's why it's starting this training so that, you know, who fell in love with it would continue in the training. So well, why do hope if I got, you know, uh, 40 people, I mean, 30 might be interested and carry on. That will be a plus for Nevis. Pusink it Nevis, I must say, because, you know, I, we are all one federation. And when I look at it, I say that would stop us from importing, you know, that would save us a couple million dollars mm -hmm. per year. I mean, if you could get more people into the fishing industry, we would be able to save, let's say, a hundred million dollars a year. I mean, you know how, yes, yes. that's a big boost. Yeah, it's quite a bit. That's a big boost, and, you know, we must eat. And the next thing I would, you know, share with you is like, the fish, they, they ain't come and live forever. Mm -hmm. They would come and then they go and then they die if you don't harvest them. Okay. It's just like you plant a, a field of corn mm -hmm. and you don't harvest them. Then they just go to waste. Okay. <laughs> Some of the seed will drop and probably spring back up. Mm -hmm. But you know, the can just go to waste. So that's why I say, you know, I want more fishermen involved so that we could, you know, harvest the crop when they come. So we could, you know, import less, you know, save some money because you see how things are run right now in terms of uh, economy. We depend highly on, on tourism. And I think we should change that trend a little bit and depend on the resources that we got make good use of the resources them, that we got because we got resources that we could generate money from. But it's just that we now use them to the best of our ability. So that's why I try hard to make sure that I could reach out to as much, you know, them young guys and get them involved in, in fishing. All right. Thanks again, Mr. Brown. And ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Brown is clearly a man on a mission, a mission to provide food for the people of Nevis. And he says next week he's going to start a training program to teach persons in the community how to make fish pots. It means this man also has a vision. He's not just a man on a mission, but he's a man with a vision as well. And he's this fisherman from the Jessup's village. Now, I would like to say thank you to all of our viewers, and we'll catch you next time on Sea Hunters.